After more than a decade of the climate wars in Australia, Labor has finally passed their climate change bill through the House of Reps. Some people have made themselves irrelevant to that process. Labor secured the deal with the support of the Greens, though they weren't too happy about it, as the bill still allows new coal and gas mines to be opened. So the next time there are fires, the next time there are floods, when we see the Great Barrier Reef bleaching next, know that that is what Labor's targets are all about. Bridget Archer broke ranks with the coalition and crossed the floor to support Labor's bill, as the opposition has so far refused to vote in favour of it. It is important that we do move forward and we act now. The climate bill won't actually reach the Senate for months, but the fact that it's passed the House with the Green support could signal the climate wars are finally coming to an end. Climate wars may or may not be over, but they're certainly in retreat. It capped a week of history-making moments with Anthony Albanese making a landmark speak at the Gama Festival in Arnhem Land, outlining his proposition to change the constitution to enshrine an Indigenous voice to parliament. But a body with the perspective and the power and the platform to tell the government and the parliament the truth about what is working and what is not. He spoke on the wording of a possible referendum question which will ask if there's support for changing the constitution. A straightforward proposition, a simple principle, a question from the heart. For now, the Prime Minister won't be announcing a date for a referendum, but he has pledged to hold a vote in his first term. I am absolutely sure that we can. David Pocock put the boots back on for a parliamentary touch footy match before he delivered a climate warning in his first Senate speech. The sixth mass extinction event is underway. The last one 66 million years ago was due to a massive asteroid. This time, we're causing it. But the standout moment belonged to Green Senator Lydia Thorpe. To the colonising Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Senator Thorpe. Uh, Senator Thorpe. Senator Thorpe. The former Prime Minister Scott Morrison made it back to Parliament in time for the second week. He put on a brave face from the backbench, as my colleague Mike Bowers captured, but he doesn't seem too thrilled with his new position. Morrison still won't tell us whether or not he was paid to speak at the Conservative conference in Japan he missed Parliament for, and his colleagues won't say if he should. Guess that's an on silence matter then. And with so many major issues being raised in the parliament, cost of living, climate, COVID, it was good to see the coalition zero in on what really mattered. I note the Prime Minister's long and close association with the lawless and criminal CFMEU. Of the CFMEU. The CFMEU. Of the CFMEU. Of the CFMEU. The CFMEU. CFMEU. And when Greens MP Max Chandler Mather raised that 163,000 people are on wait lists for public housing, the LNP once again went straight to the heart of what people really cared about. Ties. Or more specifically, the one the Griffith MP wasn't wearing. Uh, Mr Speaker, I draw your attention to the state of undress of the member. Resume your seat. Resume your seat. That is not a, that's not a point of order. Resume. And after opposing everything on the climate bill, including the amendments, the coalition says it's going to look at its own climate solution nuclear, a technology it passed on while in government, but now in opposition, things are apparently different. Putting the member for Fairfax. In charge of a review on nuclear power bears an uncanny resemblance to Mr Burns putting Homer Simpson in charge of nuclear power safety. The independents are settling into the parliament, not only making amendments to the climate bill, but also giving dressing downs to the opposition. Monique Ryan came up with this quip when she was interrupted while asking about long COVID. Put your masks on. So that's the first sitting done and dusted. The MPs are heading back to their electorates and won't be back until the next joint sitting on the 5th of September. By then, everyone should be a little more comfortable with the new normal, although some seem to be adjusting to it a little easier than others. My title is Deputy Speaker. I don't need a Mr, a Mrs, a Madam. It's just Deputy Speaker. I'll, I'll go with you. Deputy Speaker. Um, uh, but Mr Speaker, meanwhile, those opposite... Get rid.